Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to another episode of The Travel Podcast. I hope you've all had a great week. Well, it's about to get even better because we're going to talk about our favourite subject, which is travel. And I'm very delighted to be joined by a special guest today, Mark, who is Sales and Marketing Director of Constantino Brothers Hotels. And he's here to tell us more about the incredible brand. And also, we're going to focus on the destination of Cyprus. Mark, how are you? Welcome to the podcast. Hayley, good to see you again. Unfortunately, we're not in Cyprus like last time, but good good to see you. And thank you for inviting me. Oh, well, lovely to see you. Well, I was so desperate to have you on the Travel Podcast, Mark, because last time when we did meet in Cyprus, we had a fantastic chat. We were doing a, a Facebook Live on the beach and you were so yeah. knowledgeable about Cyprus. You gave us so many tips and insights. I thought this is the this is the man that we need to share this with our listeners. Um, but can you just introduce yourself in a little bit more detail, Mark, for anybody who um, hasn't had the pleasure of meeting you before? Well, sure. Yeah, my name is Mark. I'm the sales and marketing manager for Constantino Bros Hotels. And unfortunately, I'm not based in Poffers in Cyprus. I'm based in Wakefield in West Yorkshire. And I have worked for the company for nearly 20 years. Um, so during that time, I've been to Cyprus about eight or nine times a year. So I just don't know how many times I've been to Cyprus. Wow. And uh, before that, I was kind of involved with Cypriot and Greek tour operators and um, doing a sales and marketing job for them. And then for 20 years before that, I was a branch manager of the old Thomas Cook branches in Harrogate. So I've been in travel too long, really. But Last 20 years have been focused on four fantastic hotels in Paphos in Cyprus, Constantino. Oh, yes. And I was lucky enough to stay at the Asamina Suites where we met last year. And uh, we were just saying before we started recording, I loved it so much that I recommended it to my mum and stepdad. And they are there right now as we speak. I've got massive envy. They're sending me all the photos on our family WhatsApp chat and they're having the best time. Um, it is really a, a, a fabulous hotel, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, Asimina Suites, we take that particular one and it's, you know, it's beachfront. It's an award-winning hotel. It's on a lovely beach. It's adult only, so we can't send it to our family customers, but we can, you know, it's adult only. There's 110 suites. It's very tranquil, relaxing, serene. It's all about one-to-one service. We've got lots of fantastic staff there. The team's been in place for a long time. And, uh, you know, it's a seasonal hotel. We open it sort of late March and we close it in late November. So absolutely all that time, it's all about outdoor eating next to the Mediterranean. And it's just, just a wonderful hotel for completely unwinding and it's an all suite hotel so when you walk through the door of your accommodation you walk into a suite so it's spacious it's home from home it's got great amenities and you know facilities there so yeah it's wonderful property it really is i loved my suite and also the sunsets and the views the way that the hotel is designed because you've got the as you walk in you've got It's just so brilliant. You've got the pool, the palm trees, and then the sea. It's picture perfect. So I think for anybody that loves photography um, or just loves watching a beautiful sunset, there's no better place. I don't think so, no. The Paphos is, you know, a fantastic destination to catch the sunset. And from the Semina Suites, of course, you can walk down the road to the harbour, but there's a wonderful beach path, and I'm sure you... You went down there either jogging or uh, walking, but you just walk down there, catch the sunset, and not long you're right in the wonderful harbour of Paphos itself. And with our hotels, I go to hotels on conferences all over the world, and quite often I'll go to a fantastic hotel, but it's right in the middle of nowhere. But we are sat on this wonderful resort with lots to see and do there. And we were talking, Mark, when we were there about best times of year to go because it was November when uh, when we were last there. It was 26 degrees. And you said that actually you can grab yourself a great deal if you consider going sort of out of peak season. I mean, to capture those kind of temperatures close to Christmas, it was quite mind-blowing. Yeah, when you think about 
you do not have to go in the height of summer. I know that lots of the family customers have to come in July and August when it's the kids' holidays or spring back or October. But if you're outside of having young children, then yeah, why not come in October? The flights, sorry, November, the flight seats are cheaper. It's average daily temperature in Cyprus is 24 degrees centigrade in November when it's nice and chilly in the UK. You can be in your shorts and your flips up flops and just relax. And you can definitely get winter sunshine. So for any customers who are thinking that you can only go to the Canaries or the Emirates or the Caribbean in the winter, definitely November and sort of March, you get really sort of 24 degrees and it's a shoulder season. And you know, Paphos is a year-round resort. It doesn't close like Turkey does. It doesn't close like a lot of Greece does for the winter months. We have got lots and bars and refs, restaurants and infrastructure and lovely coffee shops. So, yeah, come. Yeah, come in November. But if you're a sun worshipper and you come from sort of June to October, it, it, you know, it's it, it's mid-30s, it's 30 degrees, so it's absolutely fantastic weather year-round, yeah. I think people, as you say, don't necessarily realise, I hadn't even, that Cyprus was so warm um, later on in the year. And often we do consider that we have to go so much further afield. And I just loved that it was about a four-hour flight from the UK, a very, very short, quick transfer. And I was there in that beautiful 26 degrees of sunshine. I'd left all the rain, the gloom and everything behind me. And it, it was great to be there so fast. So for people that don't like long flights as well, um, it's such an affordable destination for winter sun. I think it was a, a real hidden gem that I didn't know about. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah, All the, it's, you know, it's a four-hour flight, so it's comparable with the Canary Islands, but Paphos is sort of 15, 16 minutes away from the international airport. Once you flight touches down, it's an easy transit through the airport and you, you you can start straight away with your holiday. So one other thing to notice as well, the sea temperatures are really nice and warm in the Mediterranean around Cyprus as well. So you can swim more comfortably later in the year as well. So that's a, another point out for the customers. It's great. And I love the fact that everything stays open because that can be the downside of traveling off peak sometimes, can't it? That you think, oh, you can't feel like you're not getting the most out of the destination. But the fact that Pathos stays open all year round is a massive plus. So I love that. Yeah. I think if you come in the winter months, I think with, you know, last couple of years, one of the things consumers and we've all talked about in the UK is the cost of living crisis and how utility bills have increased. And, you know, you've got to, if you've got a winter sun holiday, you've got to offset what you would spend in the UK just eating your your homes. And yeah, to get the winter sun, it's like having a bonus when it's so cold back in the UK. It is. I just think seeing those blue skies, feeling that lovely sun and that warmth just gives you a boost and just picks your energy up. And I just think we all just love it and need it. I think that is the hardest thing, as beautiful as it is in the UK. I think when we are going through those winter months, sometimes it's quite tough because <laughs> it's often been a while since we've seen any sunshine. So having those little freights away, I think, just help keep you going, don't they? Mark, so Pathos, a really beautiful destination. And you've got four hotels, haven't you, in that area? Yeah, we've got four fantastic hotels in Pathos right on the beach, right, you know, 15 minutes away from the airport. And what's fantastic about the hotels is it's a family-run business. Mr. Constantino has had the business for over 30 years. Uh, he set it up with his brother, and uh, there's just him now. But he's got five adult children as well, and they're all working the business. They're all there every day. You see them walking around the hotel. That's what I think our customers like about it. The owners and the family, it's, you know, a generational thing. The kids are going to run it. The, the grandkids are going to run it. And it's good that they're there every day. They can see it. They're living it. They're breathing it. And we've got the four hotels. Three of them are adult only. So the Athena Beach, the Athena Royal Beach, and Asami Switch adult only. That's fantastic. No children. And then the Athena Beach Hotel is a wonderful property and we get some of our families out there you know fantastic rooms with family lots of interconnecting rooms but all the hotels have four to six restaurants they have spas they have indoor pools they have gyms they have animation programs 
they have nightly entertainment and you get such a fantastic feel when you walk in the hotels. We have so many repeat customers because we deliver a fantastic product and we get them and we want them to come back and they do come back. I went to the meal a couple of years ago for a client who'd been to the hotels over a hundred times and it, it was nice to see that loyalty. We, we, we love the loyalty, you know, and so we're award-winning hotels as well. We've recently won uh, some of the industry's biggest awards like the Travel Weekly Globe Award. And we won the best hotel company in the world. Not Europe, not Cyprus, in the world. And we were up against companies which have got like 600 and 1,000 hotels. And then there's us, this little four hotel chain in Paphos in Cyprus, but, you know, punching above our weight and winning this award. You know, we won three awards this year. And so we're so pleased. So we just want to get the clients down to Cyprus to, to experience it and enjoy it. And the hotels, we do bed and breakfast, half board, full board. We do a premium all inclusive as well. So can, clients can have whatever they want. And we hope that we cater for, you know, for all their needs. And apart from a traditional summer sun or winter sun client, we have got some things what other hotels don't have to keep our hotels busy in the winter months. For instance, we've got the biggest bowls facility for outdoor bowling in the world in the resort hotel. And it's crazy in the winter. You'll see, you know, every sort of week we'll have a hundred bowlers in on the bowling greens doing bowling. We've got the ballrooms with the dance coordinators. We do ballroom dancing, line dancing, sequence dancing, free of charge for our customers in the winter months because they're, they're a little bit more mature in sort of November, December, January, February. We've got the bridge rooms as well. And we've got the fantastic bike centers. So we've got the e-bikes, the road bikes, the mountain bikes. We do the, 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 the walking trips at the hotels. So it's not just for sunbathing holidays. We've got all these special interest activities. And then the very last special thing, what we do in the hotels, Cyprus is the island of love. And it is absolutely a wedding. Mad people love getting married in Cyprus for the weather. It's inexpensive. It's all done in English language. We've got the wedding venues at the hotel. We've got the weddings team. We only do one wedding a day, uh, including my wedding there 14 years ago. Oh, so it's, uh, it's, how lovely. Yeah, it is, it is, it is good. It's, um, it's very, very popular for UK, um, the UK public to come out and get married in Cyprus. So... That's kind of a you know an overview of the hotels. Um, if you to talk to you a little bit about Paphos, well, Paphos is a UNESCO heritage site. It is a wonderful fishing village in the sixties and seventies, which has expanded to a larger town. It's still quaint. It's still picturesque. You still get a wonderful feeling. When you're walking down the harbour, you see the fishing boats, the boats which go out and do trips. It's up market, there's lovely bars, restaurants, pavement cafes, nice shops. Um, you know, another crazy thing is that there's lots of fantastic opticians. So the glasses, what you see, what I've got on, I bought in Paphos as well. People get the glasses done there, spectacles. And um, there's a vast array of restaurants there from wonderful Cypriot ones, Greek influence ones. There's every great fish restaurants and the harbour, your clients will find no problem. It's just a short stroll away, but they you, they must go to the old town because in 2017, Paphos was a European capital culture and it's it's a thousand metres above the harbour and it's all narrow passageways, beautiful new artisan rustic bars and restaurants. So for a customer to get the most out of a trip to Paphos and our hotels, they need to go to the harbour. They need to go to the old town to experience all these different things. And sort of outside of Paphos, I'm biased because all four hotels are there. But, you know, your clients can go anywhere in Cyprus. Of course, they've got Ayanapa and Prataras at the other side of the island. Lovely, fantastic beaches over there. We're 40 minutes away from Limassol, which is the second largest city in Cyprus and some great hotels and um, great infrastructure there. And then Nicosia, it's the only divided capital um, in Europe and lots of history there to see in Nicosia, the capital. So you can pop up there quite easily and go, 
go see that. Apart from that, the Trudus Mountains, Platras, Omidos, some beautiful villages up there where you can go up and get a totally different type of holiday or a twin centre with our hotels and experience the agro-tourism and the, the village life and um, do some you know wonderful things up there. And over the top, on the north of the island, is the Akama National Park, the Trudus Mountains, uh, there's Polis and Lachi. So all those things I spoke about, you can get to quite easily in a car hire or on an excursion. So there's a lot to see and do in the surrounding area. So Mark, we so much to see and do. I think if people are holidaying in Cyprus, it is worth not staying in one place <laughs> so you get to experience it all. I love when I stayed at the Asamina Suites, as you said, the, the bikes and the e-bikes are fantastic and the promenade is so immaculate and beautiful and just sort of you go straight down on your bike and you can get to the harbour or you can walk in about 45 minutes. But have you got any tips or recommendations for um, getting around the island and making the most of it? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, look, people can come and do a sunshine holiday and they can not leave the lounge and quite right. They can just unwind because we've all got busy lives. But there's so much to see. I mean, one of the first things to tell you about Cyprus is they drive on the same side of the road as we do in the UK, left-hand side, so that's easy. It's about five or six times quiet in the UK. If you can drive anywhere in the UK, you'll find it a doddle to drive in Cyprus. It's so easy. Car hire is it, you know, inexpensive. It's good to get. You can do your own thing. Or you can take excursions to talk, you go see all the things I've talked about or will talk about. There's a fantastic bus service in on the island, and particularly in Paphos, it's inexpensive as well. The buses are nice and air conditioned, so you can you know hop on those in July and August and have a comfortable ride. Um, there's lots of great things to see and do. You can book the excursions from the hotels, you can book them in resort, or you can you know drive your own car around. There's some. Of, you know, wonderful things to see. Whenever I get any customers or um, not just travel guys contact me saying, Mark, what can the guys do in one day? I always give them a wonderful route what I like to do whenever I go there. And you can drive at, set off at 10 o'clock and come back at about half past four. But the perfect day would be to drive eastbound through Episcopi and see the football pictures and the rugby pictures of the, the military base there and then continue on to Aphrodite's Rock, the goddess of love. Uh, see Aphrodite's Rock, uh, take some snaps there, and then continue eastbound onto the Curium, which is an archaeological site from a couple of thousand years ago. It's a really elevated position looking over the bay. Wonderful, relaxing, tranquil place with lots to see and do there, but centered around a wonderful amphitheatre with really great acoustics, so nice when you go up there. I mean, I must have been 30 times, but I always look forward to going back. Um, after that, there's some amazing mosaics there. You know, if you do it yourself, you're going to have to have a guide. If you go on an excursion, you can have a guide, and the guides from the Cyprus Tourist Board are absolutely fantastic. After that, five minutes away is a wonderful Colossi Castle. Really good Nice castle to look round, really well. It's intact, it's beautiful views. It's in the Limassol district. And then after that, head up to one of the villages. My favourite village in Cyprus is a village called Omidos. I mean, you're driving into the Trudos Mountains, you drop down into this village. It's all, you know, beautifully paved, narrow passageways, lots of fantastic quaint shops there, bakeries, even better wineries. Um, a wonderful like village square with a great uh, Greek Cypriot Orthodox church. You can go in and see all the relics and the murals and all the icons and you know so so much history and culture there. And then I would just top it off with some lunch at one of the restaurants there. My favourite um, restaurant is called Yani Store Store Yani. They do a fantastic contemporary Cypriot. Meze, which will just blow you away. Great service, and you'll feel that you're in a hidden gem. You're somewhere off the beaten track where they don't know. And of course, um, there's a couple of good wineries there where they do some some really eccentric guys who've got the wineries. They do a wonderful wine tasting for you as well. And then you just come back, and it's just a perfect day. And if you can do that on an excursion or a car hire, 
you will you will thank me if you do feels like you're getting a bit of absolutely everything on that day out so much to see in a short space of time it's brilliant as you said of course people can go away and relax and just soak up the sun but to have all that culture to have all that history sounds like a feast for the eyes and to have that lovely authentic kind of cypress feeling as you said when you discover those hidden gems um, and you explore the the villages and must feel a little bit marked like going back in time almost yeah yeah definitely i mean these uh you know villages have been there for sort of a long long time but they are just, they're just beautiful i you know they, they, they do do some extra bits and pieces up there like the, with the tourism they, they they you know you can do halloumi cheese making so halloumi of course 30 years ago, nobody had heard of that. But, you know, now you see it all over the UK on menus and it's a popular cheese, but you can do salumi making, basket weaving, all sorts of different cultural bits and pieces. You can even stay up in these villages on a twin centre and really, really sort of unwind. There's a lot of the old houses up there which have been converted into rustic, artisan, beautiful sort of nice places for you to stay. So, yeah, it's, it's perfect. So, Mark, are there any unique experiences that perhaps people don't associate with Cyprus? I mean, one unusual, which I don't think most people will know, is that if you go in between sort of like November and February, at the top of the Trudos Mountains, the highest peak, there's a ski resort. You can be sunbathing in March or April around our pool and in 50 minutes, you could be where it's snowing. You can go skiing. There's a ski resort there. So it's it's a little bit what people, you know, don't recognize. And so, yeah. Um, and one other thing I wanted to sort of like tell you was that um, it's easy to confuse that Cyprus is a Greek island like Rhodes or Crete because, you know, the guys, the, the, the population speaks Greek. And that, and traditionally all the brochures we, we ever picked up were always Greece and Cyprus. But it is an EU country EU member EU state it's its own country it's like Greece but different because of where it's located right near Egypt and Turkey and the and the Middle East so over the last 10,000 years can you imagine all the people who visited there and left their mark on there left their influence uh, in the cuisine and the culture so so yeah and of course we use the euro so uh, we use the euro in cyprus and there's no crazy customs or anything like that the population of cyprus is you know it's a very similar society to what we have in in the uk so nobody's going to get caught out with anything but if you can pick up a bit of greek like kalimera for good morning or a very important one yamas or cheers and you can pick up a little bit of greek before you go for People you interact with, they absolutely love that. So nice. Yamas. I remember that from <laughs> from our stay. All the delicious food that we were being treated to. So we were saying that a lot, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Or Caliorexi, which is Bon Appetit. Mark, what I think you touched on earlier is when listeners book their holidays with a not just travel consultant. They work so closely with you and the hotels that they get direct access to all of your knowledge, your expertise and your guidance. So that really helps them tailor a unique and bespoke holiday experience for every customer. Yeah, sure. So look, we have a fantastic relationship uh, with everybody, not just travel. We've had over 200 of them out our hotels on their retreats to learn about the hotels, learn about Paphos, Cyprus, the history, the culture, the cuisine, everything. So there's already 200 experts at Not Just Travel. But, you know, I see a lot of the teams at their conferences in the UK. I see them at the events around the UK when they're doing trainings. And they've all got my contact details and my uh, colleagues' contact details. And if they need to do anything like a special request, like it's somebody's 40th wedding anniversary or it's somebody's 50th birthday or they've got a guest who's not fantastic at walk and they need to have a room near a lift or anything special request like that they will contact me it will go to the general manager of the hotel and it will be put in the room and you know they also do some nice things like if it's somebody's anniversary or birthday we'll dress the 
room with balloons and streamers and put notes in there. So just those guys are going not just travel are going the extra mile to ensure that their clients get you know over and above and they exceed their expectations and have a you know a fantastic a fantastic stay at the hotels. And I mean, somebody contacted me last week. They said, "I hope you don't mind me asking." which is the best Chinese restaurant in Paphos. And I went, well, okay, this is my favorite one. And I told them the clients, you know, will go and they'll have a great time, you know. So anything like that, yeah. It's brilliant. That close relationship really does benefit the customers. It's all those little touches that help make the holiday so special and so memorable. And if you are traveling somewhere you've never been before, rather than kind of figure it all out when you get there, it's lovely to have the expertise of yourself and the consultants that can help map out, as you said, lovely itineraries, the perfect days out, the hidden gems of where to go, where to see and what to experience. And and that's what it's all about. And we must talk about the food in Cyprus. What would you recommend people try? Wow. I mean, yeah, there's, there's lots of fantastic food in Cyprus. Um, I mean, I'll start off in the hotels, look, and then, and then I'll move on to the, the, the resorts. I mean, we've got between four and six restaurants in each hotel. We've got three different breakfast rooms, and it's a wonderful, wonderful breakfast there. Lots of different fruits. We have chefs cooking pancakes and eggs and things. And some of the things the hotel, what I really love is, of course, halloumi and lunza. The cheese and the kind of meats in the hotel. There's great lamb and beef, beef stifado dishes, lamb dishes. There's some fantastic fish uh, restaurants in Paphos as well to go tr- go try. And uh, yeah, it's, it's some some great great food, great food options. I have to say, I was so impressed with the food when I stayed at Serena Sweets. I I mean. Goodness knows how much weight I put on in the five days that I was there. But I, it, it was exceptional. And as you said, the breakfast as well. Um, talking to my mum and stepdad who were there at the moment, I said, you wait till you experience the breakfast. I said, you're so spoilt for choice. You just don't know where to start. Yeah, I mean, we, we have sort of lots of travel professionals come to the hotels and you know when when we were there we were catering for 180 people we're not we're not a conference hotel there but you know what we can do when we've got twos and four people at the same time in the choice of restaurants the food is absolutely fantastic Re- really beautiful throughout really well thought we've got some great chefs it's just wonderful we do have weighing scales in our rooms, though, so you have got to be a little bit careful. <laughs> oh, I'd hide mine away. I don't want to know. <laughs> I just want to enjoy it. Are there any other foods when you're eating around the, the island and dining out? Are there any sort of desserts or anything else that you think are worth experiencing? Yeah, I mean, there's lots of Cypriot pastries and treats, which I prefer because you get those just in Cyprus, like, you know, like the baklavas. And the Cypriot pastries. There's wonderful. There's a wonderful sweet cheese pie as well, which they do as a dessert with honey on there. So you know, a lot of the time when you're UK or Europe, you get similar stuff. But I would, I would always go for the Cypriot desserts. And yeah, I just walk down to the harbour and go grab yourself some fish, freshly caught fish, and yeah, enjoy it. So, Mark, I'm interested to know: Are there any local events or festivals that take place in Cyprus? Yeah, there's there's festivals all over Cyprus. I mean, some of the things where I've had a lot of customers contacting me and travel, you know, travel professionals. Not they're not just travel guys contacting me about is uh, recently like this Paphos Marathon. So that's very popular. People want to do go and do a marathon, and maybe not in London or Manchester, or they want to go and do it overseas. So that's been really really popular. In September, we have the fantastic opera, which we have at Paphos Castle. And, you know, set with a backdrop of Paphos Castle. So we do the opera in September. That's really, really nice. And apart from that, there seems to be a lot of wine and food festivals. So, yeah, there's plenty going on. Well, Mark, you have been a fountain of knowledge for all things Cyprus. And it's been great to go even deeper and find out more about the beautiful hotels the Constantino brothers have in Pathos. But before I let you go, is there anything else that we have missed that you think the listeners should know about before they book their holiday to Cyprus? I just feel that Cyprus is a one-stop shop 
it has got something for everybody and i think it's definitely somewhere if you've not been you come and experience it and you can have as much history and culture as you want or whatever level you want there's more and more airports uh, more flights coming down in 24 and summer 25 down there now lots of regional airports down to cyprus where We've not had flights from previously, new flights from, you know, Liverpool, from Edinburgh. Um, so, yeah, it's not an expensive place. It's good. Uh, good value for money in, in resorts. The cuisine's fantastic. And pound for pound, you will have a wonderful holiday and have some great experiences. And, you know, you book it through your guys that not just travel. They're very knowledgeable and uh, you know it's i feel it's always better to book through a travel agent because people think they can do it on their own they can do it on their own but travel agents do have a lot of inside knowledge and contacts to go the extra mile to give you the ideas to save you the money and give you experiences which you may have not known about and you've done it yourself so yeah just book it come down pay the deposit now oh no Absolutely. I mean, I cannot wait to come back. I'm keeping everything crossed that we'll we'll have some more more trips and we'll be meeting up again with you soon. Because I, as I said, I I think it says a lot that I loved it so much that my mum and stepdad are are there staying um staying at the hotel right now, having a wonderful time. And and that's the thing. It all spreads by word of mouth. You go down, you have a wonderful experience. You want to share it with other people. I've been telling everyone when I was away in November. Um, it's so hot here, you know, because we're all so cold and miserable and we can't all afford to go to the Caribbean and, and travel across the world to get that sunshine. And I, I just want more people to know that Cyprus is there. It's four hours away. It's a wonderful, wonderful destination, as you say, all year round. But in particular, going in March or going in November, if you really want to take advantage of those lower price flights, and know that Pathos is is open all year round, and you can you can get amazing deals and have a a wonderful winter winter holiday. But Mark, it's been so great to talk to you. Thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge and insights. I really appreciate your time. No problem. I enjoyed it. Thank you, and I hope we get some people out to buy Pathos. Oh, I'm sure you will. And thank you to the listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in to the latest episode of the Travel Podcast. As Mark said, our Not Just Travel consultants really are the experts when it comes to booking your holiday, not only in Cyprus, but anywhere in the world or the UK. So do get in touch with your travel consultant if you'd like any help planning your trip. And if you don't have one already, do not worry. Just head to our website, pop in your postcode, and we will connect you with one of our consultants. Thank you so much for listening. Please do like, share, rate, and review. It really does help us. I've been Hayley Sparks. It's been great to have your company and I will see you next week.